the CFA Institute has recently been subject of some pretty harsh backlash from CFA exam candidates and its own employees over the handling of the exams from 2020 and still throughout here now in 2021. Charlottesville-based CFA Institute is facing backlash on the internet after more than 100 layoffs. Candidates for the company's certified financial analyst certified financial analyst exam say they're facing test delays and many say their questions to the Institute are going unanswered. The CEO, Margaret Franklin, has now made several statements about this and even sat down for an interview with Yahoo Finance. We're going to talk about the issues some people have had. Maybe even you watching this video have had troubles trying to take an exam in 2020 and how the CFA Institute has responded so far to see if they're really addressing the problem. The Institute came under fire from students and its own staff last year when they announced that they were firing about 20% of its workforce and doing some restructuring of the exams. So that means laying off about 120 people and redesigning how the exams can be taken, namely with the CBT or computer-based testing model now, and also delaying many of the exams or postponing many of the 2020 exams into now this year, 2021. The Institute said that these redundancies followed an introduction to a new operating model to really modernize the organization. Again, the CEO, Margaret Franklin, said that the reorganization was necessary to meet new skills and competencies, as well as implement the computer-based testing method, creating new learning and education opportunities. And she also then talked about how the Institute had to hire more people to do this. But her comments and the fact that the Institute laid off 20% of its workforce has also brought a lot of anger among the remaining workforce in things like the workloads, frustration that this restructuring program happened at the exact same time as the global pandemic, and other internal inefficiencies that left the exam unable to actually test as many candidates as they needed to. Some of the employees of the Institute are saying that the feeling among themselves and other staff that they work with was that the focus should have been on the exams and actually getting those exams done. Others in the workforce said that this was a huge disruption and that they really felt demoralized. They feel that they're not being heard and that they're just pawns in some game that doesn't make all that much sense to them. And there are also concerns around the timing of these layoffs, mainly that there was a major pandemic going on at the time and that those laid off would have difficulties finding other employment, which is a valid concern. But I would give credit to the CFA Institute here because the severance packages that they offered to many of those employees were really generous. I've heard of some of the packages, and maybe this is also public information, that continued to pay salaries for 10 months after the employment had ended. The CEO said that the Institute was continuing to communicate, survey, and listen to our own staff as the new strategy was being rolled out. This sounds a little bit different than the accounts that we've heard from a handful of disgruntled CFA Institute employees, but like any argument, obviously there are two sides to it, and you can kind of understand where both sides are coming from here. But after these layoffs and restructuring of the exams, there were many other complaints other than the ones that I've just mentioned here. Dozens of posts on Reddit and Twitter and other social media sites from candidates say that they've had their exams canceled or been able to delay their tests. Many say that they can't get a response from the Institute after making multiple attempts to ask questions or to reschedule. One Reddit post from October sums up how a lot of candidates were feeling saying that the CFA doesn't care about us. Is it an ethical violation to call the CFA Institute just the CFA? I can't remember. In other threads, users were venting their frustrations over multiple testing site cancellations, saying that the CFA Institute had six months to try to figure things out and to get a better understanding of where they could and couldn't host these exams, and that instead of doing that, they just decided to do nothing. That seems a little bit unfair. I know this whole situation must have been unbelievably difficult from the candidates' perspectives who were having their exams rescheduled. I'm going to offer my empathy towards that position later on here. But you can't blame the CFA Institute for the timelines throughout 2020 because of the nature of the pandemic that the globe is on and is continuing to still see. It's just something that was totally outside of their control. And ultimately, 104 locations worldwide canceled their December 2020 examinations because of COVID-19. But it is a serious issue when candidates are having trouble getting in contact with the CFA Institute. Dozens of other posts across social media sites detail and show proof of extremely delayed responses from the Institute in returning their questions about rescheduling exams. Countless others show issues of them receiving their refunds from the exams that were canceled, which was one of the options the Institute gave to people. So it's obvious that a lot of this wasn't run as smoothly as it could have by the Institute. And that just becomes more and more of a frustration when people know that they just laid off 20% of their workforce. It's like, if you had more people around to answer these email inquiries, maybe I could have gotten a response in a reasonable amount of time. One article 
quoted a frustrated candidate saying that CFA candidates are extremely passionate about the finance industry and invest hundreds and hundreds of hours in studying for these exams, and so they should have some sort of a leeway, a certain minimum period of time for which the CFA Institute should have to provide them with a decision on over allowing a certain test to happen in a certain location. There was a thread complaining that the Institute really failed to protect exam candidates and their mental health throughout their study process, given that these people didn't know if they were gonna be sitting for an exam in 10 days or not. But the CEO, Margaret Franklin, pushes back against many of these criticisms, saying that the Institute has been in constant communication with all of its candidates throughout the pandemic. She said there were significant complexities, including technological and security-related complexities that came with administering these exams, and added that their teams were working at an accelerated pace to address these issues and to get testing back in 2021. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I really feel for the candidates here. Being someone who studied for all these exams and sat for all these exams, I was really particular about making sure I had a plan on how I would approach the studies and attack the exam. I was really particular about my, my process throughout the entire study time, my review during the last six weeks, my final three days of study and the exam day procedures that if any of those got materially changed by the Institute, even if because of some outside global pandemic, I would have been extremely discouraged. And even for someone less particular than I was about their study process, as much time as you put in studying for one of these things, having the rug pulled out from underneath you would just be a huge blow to your confidence. I just can't imagine how difficult that would be to have to overcome, to be honest. I know that the pandemic last year brought on interruptions to many different types of events and industries worldwide, but there are very, very few other industries, and this is why the CFA exams have been called the hardest exams on the planet. There are very few other industries, programs, or events in which people have to sacrifice hundreds and hundreds of hours over years and years, probably amounting to thousands of hours over the course of the entire program, all leading up to a certain event on a certain day. And your preparation for that day has to be done in a very meticulous way. To have that one specific day be like thrown into the wind because of something that's going on, I can't think of too many other academic or professional scenarios in which the pandemic created more of an inconvenience than with the CFA exams. And a lot of the things that we've seen the CFA Institute do over the past five years have really shown that it is in fact a for-profit entity and that in some instances the exam candidates and current charter holders are not always prioritized. I don't totally blame the Institute for this, it's just the reality of what it is. So again, I understand candidates who feel really disenfranchised by some of the decisions the Institute has made on top of the fact that their exams had to be rescheduled because of either local or global regulations during what was going on last year. That really didn't make for a good situation. So does the Institute care? I think the answer is yes, but not as much as they care about their bottom line. If you've gotten to this point in the video, it means that you watched the whole thing and I very much appreciate that. If you want to support me anywhere else, check out the three links in the description down below. You can also like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done either of those things yet already. And I really appreciate both of those things. So as always, thanks for watching.